uh, super excited to be here. Yeah, so I'm Ratchet. I um, actually am a Bay Area native as well. I went to Lindbergh High School, I uh, went to USC for college. I'm back in my house for quarantining and then working full time in the Bay as well. So we're all very close to each other right now. Um, but yeah, I can get started. So let me go ahead and screen share, make sure I can do that. Uh, presentation is Can we A star our lives? You may or may not know what A-star is, I'll get into it, but I think you'll see why this is the, this is the theme of the discussion. Um, but yeah, can we A-star our lives? Jumping in, this is me, how's it going? You see me here, I'm here too. Um, yeah, I'm Ratchet, I'm a Bay Area local, grew up here, went to Lindbrook, went to USC, um, have gotten in tech, you know, into a various uh, set of different spaces in terms of startups and big companies. So some of these logos might be recognizable as an intern at Facebook and Apple. Um, as well as at Blend, Shape, and a part of the KPCB Fellows Program, which is like a startup incubator program um, that connects students in the area from across the country to various San Francisco portfolio companies. Um, so a lot of tech on here at the bottom, Lindbergh Viking, as well as USC. So kind of a little spread of, of what I got uh, involved in. Um, and yeah, this is, this is kind of generally what I've been working on so far, what I've been doing. But before we get into the specifics, I want to jump back to that title about what is A-star? Uh, simply put, it's a graph traversal algorithm that helps you find the most optimal path from A to B. So imagine a graph is like a city, for example. A city is a graph. You know, you look at a city and it has all these different dots of like the various locations of important landmarks. Like if you literally looked at a map, you can make a graph out of that. Where like the museum is over here, the library is over here, and those are all little points. And you could ask like, what is the most optimal path from A to B? What is the shortest way to get from museum to library? And this is like an algorithm in, uh, in computer science and why I bring it up like super high level. It just figures out what is the shortest path in a very uh, optimal way. And so imagine like, you know, you wanna get from A to B, but now it's your life, right? Like, can you strive for this optimal, I'm trying to get from A, my early days of high school to college or like this future career, these are all points in some graph of life. And like, I want to figure out the best way to get there. And everyone's always thinking about this, about like, what are they, what can they do, spend their time wisely on, like where they can be investing their time. Um, and so you can think about this as a framework of like, sure, there's an A star out there for graphs that like finds the most optimal path, but can you do this for your life? And I'm gonna tell you about mine, about how my high school went, how college went, how my career is. And maybe you can think about this for my lens too. Like, did I have an optimal A star path? Um, the answer is no, by the way, but you'll see that. <laughs> uh, so cool. This is kind of the intro there. Let's talk about my Viking adventures. So back in 2011, when I was starting high school uh, as a Lindbergh Viking, um, there's a few things I did from 2011 to 2015 that kind of cover that spread of my interest. You'll notice a lot of this isn't actually tech. And the reason is for the entire four years of my high school career, I wanted to become a doctor fully, like no tech interest whatsoever. Clearly that's not what I'm doing right now. So pretty good, pretty big 180 in the middle. But in terms of the interest and kind of what I got myself excited about, um, when I started in 2011, I knew, you know, I liked sports. I was doing swimming when I was younger. So I wanted to get into swimming and water polo. And that was a really great team sport that I could get myself invested in and just stay fit, stay active. Um, that was a big one. And that kind of went through from 2011 to 2013 uh, for the past like a year or two. I also really got into, uh, excited about debate. So policy debate was a really big thing at that time. Um, There's a lot of my mentors when I came in and I, I looked up to them, they were doing policy debate and I really wanted to be like them, be more just eloquent in what I was saying, be able to talk off the top of my head, be able to make cohesive arguments. And policy was a really good way all four years to be able to get that. Not only that, but honestly, of the things that I've done in my four years of high school, that probably went the furthest because Making arguments, thinking on the spot, being able to explain things well, goes well beyond any career path, anything you do in your life. It's just, it's just part of you at that point. And I think that was a really great starting point for me as well. Um, it also helped me find my best friend from high school uh, till now. So great way to you know, make connections and meet new people. So there was policy debate as well. And my freshman year, I kind of, you know, I was just exploring. Like those were my main interests. I just wanted to figure out how to do well with midterms and finals, like this very very new concept as opposed to middle school. Um, and so when I did all this, my first year was super, super chill. I was playing games most of the time and then, you know, spending my, the rest of my time in, in these interests. And for that summer, I was like, you know, I really enjoyed debate. It's fun. I made this really good friend as well. What if we go to a debate camp together? 
And so that summer, I went to Michigan Debate Institute, MNDI, uh, Michigan National Debate Institute for policy debate. Super great experience, get to be away from home for a month or two, uh, learning the ins and outs of different policy debate techniques, being able to debate with other people, making these friends that I, I still talk with, you know, five, six years later. So a lot of this kind of the first year was formed around enjoying debate, enjoying what I was doing there. No real career interests yet, you know, just trying to figure out how to do classes well. The one thing I did enjoy, though, was bio at the time. I realized I loved bio. I loved the life sciences. Uh, just understanding, like, you know, you look outside the window and you're like, okay, I know about the alternation of generations of a gymnosperm versus angiosperm, like random science facts about life, uh, like life cycles of trees. And, you know, it's not really useful for anything else, but it's, it's really cool to know how the world works that way. And that started pushing me a little more into the STEM side and enjoying bio, wanting to go more on the pre-med side. So for the next year, 2012 to 2013, I started getting a little more invested in the sciences, um, but also just trying to figure out like what other interests could I get myself involved with. And French was a really big one that I, I started putting a lot more time into. So for context, actually in middle school, I'm not sure if that's the same case for your high schools or middle schools, uh, we had two years of language in seventh and eighth grade. And I started off taking French there and I loved it so much, and like the culture, the experience that pretty much for the next four years of high school, but starting off in sophomore year, I really invested my time into that. So getting involved in my French honor society, um, listening almost like exclusively to French music for entire years straight to understand it better and just like get to know that well, um, really enjoying the culture and the cuisines, things that again, like, you know, not very specific to a career path to like anything that's like, okay, I have to optimize for this in my life. It was just a passion that still sticks with me today um, and, and also a great way to make that community for yourself. But kind of alongside that, you know, on, on the realm of the career side, uh, I really did enjoy STEM still. And, and I felt like it, it was something that bio was still getting more interesting. I was doing chem honors. Um, I was doing a little more dabbling into science fairs as well and like science bowls. Um, and that ultimately led to me going to Cosmos for that upcoming summer. Uh, I'm sure you might be familiar with it. Um, it's a pretty big STEM program here that uh, is housed in a variety of UCs in the area. And it's basically just a summer camp for like two months straight uh, where you basically get to learn in a specific domain. For me, that was biomedicine, biomedical engineering. That was the cluster I went to at UC Irvine. Uh, super interesting stuff over there too. You know, you get to learn about like how to suture, working with robotic machines like Da Vinci robots, to do surgeries, um, obviously not on real people, but playing around with those materials. Um, again, great communities that you get to bond with. Uh, no homework, so it's literally just just like learning and then having a great time afterwards with your friends. So you look at the theme here and it's like a lot of these side interests that were just more for personal growth, learning new languages, being able to be more uh, eloquent as a speaker. Um, and then that also supplementing a lot of the work I was doing in science fairs, at Cosmos. Like you kind of can draw the parallels there where, for example, you take a science fair. Um, I done this two or three years in a row from 2012 to 2014, uh, where I was able to work, uh, I was able to go to the regional synopsis science fairs and then go to the California State Science Fair in LA. And a lot of that actually comes down to, you know, obviously putting in the work, like understanding all this research that can translate to a really cool end impact for the world. But then you realize, end of the day, it's literally just you talking to judges and selling them on what you've done. And a lot of selling things on what you've done is directly transited from what you've done in debate, which is like, this is a person I have to convince them of this cool thing that I've done, and I'm just gonna go and do that in, in the next 10 minutes. And that, that correlation um, ends up working out really well because STEM in general is one of those things, and like even in life, a, a, as you look forward, it's a big focus around making sure that whoever you're talking to, your audience, like you guys right now, or your friends, or a judge, they are, on the same page, they're listening to what you're saying, they're interested in it, and you can convey that well. Uh, and you can find all these parallels in literally anything that you do. Um, that's why I keep looking back to debate as like something that'll last for however long that I decide to, to you know, keep talking to people because they're very, they're very intertwined in just how useful it is um, to be able to keep explaining your perspective and like get people excited about it. So that's kind of a good correlation there. Uh, Cosmos leading into science fairs, and then, you know, at this point, like, I've definitely truncated three or four years of, of life that you guys have currently experienced for the past three years. It's, it's probably felt a lot longer for you guys than, than I'm saying it. Um, this is obviously all in parallel with doing work and 
getting good grades or trying to you know, making sure you know you're, you're you're keeping up with your friend groups um, but this is kind of like that main path uh, as a Lindbergian. And then 2014, as you guys are probably feeling, you know, you're juniors, you're in this pivotal moment where it's this main year of like, I have to do SATs and I have to do like all of these things that I'll, you know, set myself up for like a good way of framing myself for colleges and like solidifying my interests now. Um, as you can see, like a lot of this is geared towards pre-med, towards biomedicine, like engineering that way. Um, not even, not even like CS engineering, just, just STEM engineering. Um, so 2014 came around and I was like, this is that pivotal summer and it's like the main one, you know, you talk about before colleges and like the, the main conversation point. Um, and for me, I realized that I really enjoyed neuroscience. So actually one thing all four years, you'll see this picture of a brain there. All four years, I was a part of my school's neuroscience club as well. Um, and it was this really interesting coincidence where when I joined, I was talking about role models. My policy captain and the president of my neuroscience club were the same person. And I aspire to be this person because super, you know, eloquent and great person to talk to, really, really smart, leading this great neuroscience initiative. And interestingly enough, by 2014, I was in that same position as the captain of my, uh, as policy debate team, or like co-captain and neuroscience president. And I almost like framed my way of thinking to be in those positions. Um, and a lot of this kind of like helped me structure what I wanted to be. So if there's any takeaway from there, it's kind of, finding a role model that you can envision yourself learning towards and maybe not necessarily putting yourselves in their shoes that literally, like that you're actually doing what they were doing, but, you know, thinking about how you can frame your interests and like seeing your growth that way throughout high school. Um, so yeah, 2014 was a really big year where I wanted to get more involved in neuroscience. So I had this super awesome opportunity where I actually went to India for the summer and I shadowed a neurosurgeon. Um, and there's things you can do in India, obviously, a little more relaxed in terms of regulations that you can do over here. So that's a cool opportunity where I was actually able to scrub in into neurosurgery. It's like literally, you know, like you watch on the show, scrubbing in, washing your hands, like putting on the full suit, um, standing in the room where the surgeon's operating on the surgery table. Um, one of the most memorable moments was I was pretty much in the room for like five hours while uh, the neurosurgeon was operating on an eight-year-old who had a tumor in their spine. And he was literally like, you know, cutting through every single layer of the fat and the tissues, like peel away where the tumor finally was, calling me over to like peer over and explain every single level. Um, pretty crazy experience that, you know, gets you a little more perspective on, is this what I really want to do long term? Like, do I want to be a doctor long term? Because if there's anything that you're going to take away from all this, I think it's that it's one thing to say, I want to do something off of enjoying or doing well in a class. Like, it's not necessarily the case that getting an A in bio and loving it translates to you being a doctor, like wanting to be a doctor down the line. Um, I'm just giving my perspective in this case, uh, because that's kind of almost how I was judging my high school pathway. Uh, and I kind of found out, like, you know, this is super cool, but maybe there are other interests I could also consider, because I don't necessarily think there's like a very strong correlation there. And so you see this little like computer icon at the end of 2015, literally when I was making my college decision. I take an APCS as just a fun class, to like enjoy and you know, I enjoyed it, like did well in the, in the AP test and grades, but I never entertained it as a career pathway. So this entire time I'm like, I wanna be a doctor. And I applied almost everywhere for college to be a doctor, but two places that I applied for CS, uh, two or three places were USC and um, Georgia Tech, and actually like one or two other places. Literally no, no CS backing, right? There's just, it's just me having that APCS and then this whole list of things I've done that are putting me in a position to apply as a pre-med. And then ultimately, it came down to these two decisions. Um, it was a matter of USC for pre-med or Berkeley for CS. Um, there's a few other schools in the mix there, but either they were too expensive or they were like too far away. Uh, I kind of wanted to be in, in California as well. Um, so some insight into this process was that I was choosing between these two schools um, one private, one public, one for medicine, one for CS. Um, in terms of other factors, like for me, it came down actually, it, it was oddly convenient enough uh, where I could make this decision. Like USC is very expensive, but uh, I was fortunate to actually get a full tuition scholarship, which actually made it comparable between Cal and USC is like, I don't have to shell out 70K a year versus 14K a year and have that be a really big consideration. Um, so that, you know, different per person, but definitely levels of playing field. And then the question for me again was like, I'm interested in CS and I'm interested in, in pre-med now that I've been doing for so long. Like, 
there's this really big crossroads. And for me, it almost came down to a decision where USC as a private school just had a lot more flexibility where I could just show up and say, I want to do this. And maybe, you know, uh, a semester later, I decide I want to do something else. And as a, a private school, they can let me do that. Where in a public school, you'll often find that you have to spend a semester or two just showing like, I can get a 4.0 that I deserve to be in this new major. Um, and, and you kind of have to put in that work there. So some pros and cons. Uh, also USC, I was able to visit the campus for both of them. Um, USC is a beautiful campus. If you guys ever visit, it's awesome. Super flat, really nice, like 10 minute uh, longboarding ride or bike ride across campus. You can get anywhere you want to. Uh, so it's so a pretty, you know, pretty, pretty interesting spread here. Um, and so yeah, TLDR, it was like Cal, great EECS program. You know, maybe I can switch into that from bioengineering, which I actually applied for. Weirdly enough, USC, I applied for CS, but I knew I could switch into pre-med, which is why you see pre-med over here. So it's like, going back to this A-star question, there's a lot of weird things that aren't matching up in like this perfect alignment of, I want to be this and I'm going to be doing that over there. Um, but kind of the end of the day there, I decided at USC, as you can tell, I graduated from there. Um, but like what I was talking about, it was as a CS major, it wasn't as pre-med. And the story behind that is I knew coming in that I could honestly do whatever I wanted to. I came into CS, but I switched to biomedical engineering, thinking that I could be a CS, uh, sorry, a pre-med person as a biomedical engineering student and see how that goes. But as soon as I got there, I was like, I think CS could be a really cool opportunity. So what if I just switch my intro biomedical class with my intro to CS class? If that doesn't work out, I can literally switch back and like life goes on, no issues. But if I don't, I'll never know if, if CS was the right path for me. So literally I got there and the second day I was there before classes started, I went to my counselor and she literally just backspaced my major name and rewrote computer science and that was all it took. So super convenient. And I'm honestly really glad I chose a private school that way because I, I could have that flexibility. Um, not to say it's not possible in other schools, but it was one of the things that I, I'm fortunate I was able to get from, from their curriculum. So now that you have this framing, right? Everything that I was doing, fully pre-med, and then the second day I show up, I'm gonna be a CS student. Um, that actually switched to my entire career at college. And everything I did built into these three pillars of entrepreneurship, community building, and technology. And so if you kind of look at this structure here, um, these are just logos, but I'll, I'll go into a few of them. Startup Career Fair, um, actually, let's start even before that. That middle logo you see right here, the, the little yellow circle going in a circle, is Spark SC. And Spark was pivotal in my entire college experience. It was our premier entrepreneurship organization, and our whole focus was on building communities. And the way we did that manifested in these various logos that you're seeing. So Startup Career Fair uh, was one example where we basically, as a student org of six people, built an entire startup career fair for USC. Like thousands of people attending, completely independent of USC's faculty or, or administration. Just us deciding, you know what? We're going to fundraise from these uh, various startups in the LA community. We're going to get them to show up on campus and we're going to get people jobs. And like thousands of students show up that day. We're going to make sure everything is going well and get people jobs at like Snapchat, Tinder, Daiquiri, Jaunt, like all these really big startup names. Um, and that was a super crazy experience because that was something I had the opportunity to do my second semester freshman year. So I, you know, I was 18. I, I literally like had been at this school for, for four months, six months, and they gave me the opportunity to leave. Cool. <laughs> Little echoing. Um, and yeah, it's these type of opportunities that if you can get involved in like community building especially, you know, it's not related to your major whatsoever. It's just, I wanna get people excited about startups you have this chance to, to really just go in and, and, and get all these people in one place uh, and really feel like you're fulfilled and making that impact. So Startup Career Fair was awesome. Got to do it early on, like really gave me a taste for these, these community building experiences and also connecting the outside entrepreneurial community in LA to the ones on campus. So that was Startup Career Fair. Um, the one at the bottom with this little circle uh, is called Founders. And it was similar in that sense where we were like, you know, it's, it's hard to get that perspective of building companies on campus. Um, what if we got people in LA, founders, CEOs, to show up and give these talks? Um, you know, some of your previous talks had founders or like VCs or, or big names that, that actually had done these crazy things. And like, you know, this is a great example of, of a platform where you can showcase that. But we wanted to bring people explicitly from LA 
to USC and get Trojans excited about doing this on campus. And so Founders is a way to do that, where you know you could get um, founders, CTOs, COOs of like cybersecurity companies in the area or big social media companies to just show up on campus, sit in a round table, like imagine all of us just sitting in a circle and having a full Q&A panel. Um, and that also brought the sense of fulfillment where you could connect people from the community, you could feel like you're the person leading that, bring this entrepreneurial aspect, um, and also technology usually, uh, of like tech companies in the area, all into one space for a span of an hour. And that was a, just a really fulfilling feeling as well. Um, one of my proudest moments though, I would say, was as part of USC Hackers, which is this little hexagon you're seeing on the top right. And USC Hackers was an opportunity uh, that I got to lead as a committee inside Spark that I led for a year where this is actually tying more to the tech side. I really wanted to get a feel for like, you know, I was pre-med this whole time, now I'm gonna be in tech, like what does that mean? And a big part of that is actually building your tech community. And it's like, whether you're pre-med, whether you're tech, whether you're architecture, it doesn't matter what you're doing, the people that you're surrounded with are going to be the most important uh, in your college career. And USC Hacker's entire vision was, can we make a coding space where people can come together every single Thursday from 8 p.m. till literally the next day, like overnight, to just code together, to drink, uh, you know, drink boba, eat some sandwiches, like drink coffee, have some nice vibes playing in the background on speaker, and just just enjoy for like the entire night. And that was our vision as part of Hack Nights, is what we called it. Every Thursday, just having this hacking forum, and that was probably the most, most, uh, like an inflection point I'd say in my college career, where you kind of bring all these three pillars together into just one space, and it really makes you feel like. This is what college is about, about meeting people, about getting better understanding of technology, bringing in students, speakers, like talk about their building, feeling like an entrepreneur in the sense of building communities, not necessarily burning companies. Um, so that was a really great uh, just outlet uh, of tying all these three pillars together. And then finally, Hack SC, uh, which was technically part of Spark, got split up. It was USC's premier hackathon. It is USC's global hackathon. Like yeah, this is the one that kind of defines the, the, the university. And if you're interested in tech at all, I'm sure you know like hackathons are a big part of the culture. You literally take a weekend and you can build anything. You just sit down with some friends, you build anything. And the best part about hackathons too, and I'll always tie this back to debate, is it's literally like a startup career fair. It's a start, start, it's like a science career fair. You show up, you do something, whether you've been doing it for the past few months or for a weekend, and then you're just talking to judges and you're trying to sell your vision. And based on how well you can sell and how interesting your product is, you get rewards for it. You're like, oh, you know, you deserve a Google Chrome, uh, like a, a Chromecast. You deserve an Apple Watch, like blah, blah, blah. Just, just fun stuff like that where you can, you can kind of have this feeling of, I built something super cool and I can get validation for it within two days. And so Hack was was really great for me because I actually got to see from both sides. My first semester when I was at USC, trying to figure out how to be a CS student, it was one of the first things I did. I made a group of three or four people and I attended Hack SC and we actually built this, um, we built this app where on an Apple TV, you'd have four screens, like a two by two, and you could modify the video playing with your iPhone touch gestures. So like if you swipe it, if you shake it, it would manipulate the screen uh, and you'd like make it either like static or, you know, swirl effects. And you could hover your phone camera on a QR code and it would start playing music as you put it over the QR code or not. Just like a super fun, very random feature, right? Like not particularly useful. But then as you talk to judges, you're like, wait, what if this is the future of television? What if this app becomes how people interact with TVs for like the next decade? And like you use your phone to pan around different experiences, blah, blah, blah. Like you come up with these crazy visions because that's the environment you're in. And it ended up working out super well. Um, we actually ended up winning uh, the first place prize for like Apple's uh, hackathon there, which was uh, Apple was one of the judges and not this Apple watch, but the one before it that I wore for four years was the prize from Hack SC. And so it was just like, it was this amazing memento, like for all my college four years, like what was on my, on my wrist was the reflection of what I wanted to do for the next four years. Um, and the great thing was in my senior year and junior year, I was actually a, um, lead for Hack SC. I was the director, kind of like making it happen. So I was able to see both sides as an attendee, and then four years later, like, what is it like to make this experience for people coming in? Um, and so hopefully this kind of gives, you know, a good breadth of, with these three pillars of my main interests, again, like, 
you know, this could apply to pre-med too. You can still build communities in pre-med. You can still be an entrepreneur in the pre-med space. You can still integrate tech into the pre-med space, no matter what you're doing. Um, but even then, like, I didn't necessarily just restrain myself to what I did in high school and say, this is what I have to do in college. I could still apply this to any other domain that I was interested in. And it was really cool that I, I was fortunate to have these opportunities to do so. So hopefully this gives a little spread of my college experience, like what I, what I got myself more excited about. Um, feel free to ask questions after this about any of these things. Uh, I can talk for, yeah, for hours <laughs> about any of these in particular. So yeah, this is, this is my college experience. Um, let's talk about intern season, about like the tech side about all of this. So this is a little spread of what I've done. Um, I definitely had the opportunity and I was really fortunate to be a part of a lot of different intern experiences over the course of, of uh, my college career. Actually, you see Apple at the bottom left. Funnily enough, that hackathon prize actually triggered the conversation with the recruiters that were at the hackathon to get started with the internship. And that translated to me being uh, an Apple intern in my freshman summer, which was like all these weird coincidences that just, you don't even see them lining up until they happen. And I can, I can like form this story in hindsight. When I was doing it, I had no clue what I was doing. Like in a, as a freshman, I had negative idea what I was doing. Things were just, just happening and I was going with it. Um, but as you can see, you know, Apple, it was a great opportunity to work on the developer side. I was working on iOS 11 as part of like the iPhone 10 that was coming out a while back. Um, I was a Facebook intern working on stories. So I'm sure you're familiar on Instagram and Snapchat. I was helping build out the first version of stories on Facebook, uh, which is also a super cool experience. I was interning at Shape actually after that as a cybersecurity intern working on some machine learning algorithms where I was actually able to figure out like as part of the research team, if you can form like a digital fingerprint of someone based on how they move their phone. So basically we want to make sure as a, as a security company, if you are moving your phone in a certain way and somebody else starts using it, they shouldn't be able to access your apps because they're not using it the same way you normally walk or you normally move your phone. Uh, so that's a really cool application there. Blend, a really big FinTech company in uh, San Francisco, working on like microservice architectures and like all these backend technologies and a really defining experience uh, as part of Shape actually was the Kleiner Perkins Fellow Program, where you basically connect students from all across the country to portfolio companies uh, that are run by like a VC, Kleiner Perkins, really big VC in SF, and you get the startup experience. But alongside that, you get to talk to CEOs in the area, you get all these great mentorship resources with like the founder of uh, KP, John Doerr, um, just, just a lot of really great ex exposure to, again, those different pillars, community building, technology, and entrepreneurship. And that's kind of how I've tried to strive for all of these here. I'm happy to talk about you know, the individual experiences later too, how I got them. Uh, the TLDR is referrals are really important just by your friends, by people that you know, that'll really get your foot in the door. Obviously once your foot's in the door, you gotta get the rest of yourself into it. And that, that means showing up and being able to deliver, but foot in door is a really hard part of it. And the referrals really get you there uh, because it's, it's someone saying that they trust you and, and the company really values that a lot. So yeah, definitely happy to talk about this more as we get into the Q&A session, but this is kind of a spread of, of the various tech experiences I've had. So yeah, that's intern season. Let me talk a little bit about software at Facebook. So I'm currently a Facebook engineer uh, working full time. I started in January and I've been working on building the future of e-commerce for the company on a new experience called Facebook Shops. I can't go into too, too many details, obviously. This is still up and coming and it's a, it's a really big push, but it was pretty awesome where um, I actually had the chance to go into the e-commerce space and Facebook is one of those places where we do a lot of things, but one of the things we can do really well is connect you to brands because brands have pages and they have this social presence and we have the option to, to make, make basically bridge that between you and the end of brand. So this is actually an example of what we launched back in April, um, Facebook shops for Spearman Baby, which is a, it's like a, a shop for, um, parents who just had kids and you know, they want like kids uh, clothing or like make them trendy or, or looking cool. And it's basically a shop platform. You know, you can shop different collections. You can see items for yourself. And the best part about this entire experience is that it really feels like a startup in the company. Like you've heard, you know, the whole move fast, break things. That's their motto. Um, it's kind of crazy. Like how fast things move because the rest of the world if we can ship a really useful product and we have to move accordingly. So, you know, we're coding like really quickly. We're getting reviews really quickly. We're just trying to make sure that everyone has this really welcoming attitude to any changes that you make and like 
really cohesive team uh, that kind of gets you that end result. And again, community building, technology, debate skills, like things I'm bringing back from literally eight years ago in my life are still applying today. And they just, they just show up in these odd moments where you wouldn't realize, like, how do you convince your teammate this is a good idea? How do you make sure that, you know, they're, they're seeing a certain perspective of like what you might've gotten from, from playing around with this in another internship or, or blah, blah, blah. Like these things just randomly pop up and it's, it's kind of up to you to figure out how to apply them. But no, Facebook is, it's, it's an awesome place. I actually interned there twice, once in Menlo Park, once in New York. So it was a no brainer to come back full time because it is, it is a great culture, um, super welcoming. Anything that I ask from anyone, like you can just set up a one-on-one -on -one anytime you want and, and people are receptive to that. And yeah, we move really quickly. So I'm obviously happy to give more details, maybe not about the work, but like my day-to-day, -day, uh, again, in the Q&A session. But it's kind of an overview of, of that culture and why I wanted to go back because it, it just spreads so many different um, different types of products. Like, you know, I'm sure you're all familiar with Instagram and, and uh, Messenger, Facebook, obviously. Maybe my generation, my parents will use it more. I understand that. <laughs> but um, that's kind of, uh, that's kind of across the board, you really get that, that feeling of community and that culture. So it's been a great time. I mean, I've only been here six months and already, already having a blast and being able to work on some pretty high impact work. So that's software at Facebook. And again, during Q&A time, any of these things, feel free to ask me about. But I want to go back to this initial question, you know, can we A-star our lives? And I've given you this whole perspective of mine, like my A of Lindbergh freshman to my B of me today. And I wouldn't ever say I was on the optimal path or even knew what that path was. Like I didn't even know what B looked like as a freshman in high school. And so while you can't be on this optimal path and find the shortest direction to where you want to be, you can make the most of whatever opportunities present themselves or come your way. And I think that's probably a defining theme in all of what I've done is that when I give this presentation, I can look back on eight years and I can make this story for you. I can connect the dots for you because I know what those look like. But as a freshman in high school, as a freshman in college, as a person today, I, I didn't even know those dots existed, let alone like they could even be connected. So I think there's a lot of hindsight where I can make this story for you and hopefully it's useful. But what I want you to understand is like, there's never any optimum uh, that you can know exactly where you are. I thought I was gonna be a doctor like four years from, from when, I, when I was applying for college is clearly not the case. Uh, and I think that, that kind of goes to show like, if there's any example of someone who's gone from thinking they're gonna do something and that's the rest of their life to clearly not, that I, I think my life is a good example of that so far. And I'm sure eight years from now, I think I'm doing something that clearly won't be the case. I, I'm sure it won't be the case. Uh, and so I, I think in your lives, especially, even if you're at a high school or now, even when you're in college and beyond, like this will stay true. And, and it's always good to be aware of that and just do the best that you can with what you're given. And if you feel like, you know, this is something you wanna pursue, just do it because maybe it works out, maybe it doesn't, you, that, that's for you to figure out. So yeah, that's, uh, that's about a starting life and, and making the most of your opportunities. Some quick advice for aspiring sweets for those of you that are here. Um, even if you're not, I think this will actually honestly apply to, to anything that you do. And this is kind of what I've touched on, you know, throughout this entire presentation is finding your community. Spark was a super great outlet for me to do that and building these communities in the tech space and the founder space. There's a group of friends that you're constantly stimulated by where you don't feel like you're doing something and you're just bored of what you're doing, but there's no other external stimuli. Uh, a community that really cares about the same things will just keep ideas bouncing and keep you excited about what you're doing. Um, whether you're in tech, whether you're in pre-med, whether you're in law, architecture, like any major of your choice, having a group of friends that really pushes you forward is, is the best thing you can do, honestly. Um, the second thing is hackathons. Because hackathons are literally, it's like, imagine, I'll give you a super basic example. You know, like maybe you tell somebody, hey, I read two books a month, and they're super impressed, like, whoa, where do you get all this time? And then you realize you could just spend the first Saturday and the last Saturday of the month reading the entire day and you've accomplished your goal with two days out of the 30 days you have of your month. And that's what a hackathon is like. It's doing something super crazy that like, wow, where did this come from? In a really short span of time because you can dedicate yourself to it and, and like all of a sudden you have this really impressive result. And that's, that's what it's like in tech. That's what it's like in anything that you do because you can go from feeling like, oh, I don't know what I want to do to just spending 24 hours straight with a group of friends and like 
have something you can pitch and get excited about. It. And this is literally what a science fair is like. This is what a tech hackathon is like. This is what anything where you do something in a short burst of time can net you the super cool output. Uh, and then at least kick off like a lot more interesting conversations down the line. So if you can think about like sparing literally just a day of your life and say, I want to figure something out. I want to read a full book. I want to come up with a cool new club idea. You'll be surprised at what you can do in, in a weekend. Uh, so I'd encourage you to try something out like that. I, I think it actually gets you some pretty interesting results. And then the third one, which kind of ties into the second actually, is just having side projects. The majority of mine were actually out of hackathons where I felt like I could spend that weekend and come up with something pretty cool. Um, an example is I built something called ClaireBot with a group of friends, which was a chatbot for homeless youth in LA, where you could use it and just ping um, the bot to figure out where's the nearest food shelter. Is it going to be hot or cold tonight? Is there a place I can go that has you know free clothing that I can pick up? Um, things like that, where it's it's just something that comes from a weekend of figuring out what technologies are available, but you can create a story around it that's actually useful. You can apply it to something that's an actual problem and and do something good uh, with the time that you have. So that's an example of a side project. Um, the other one I gave you is the example of the, the Apple prize back in Hackett C, which seems super dumb in the moment, but you can actually spin it to actually have that uh, impact down the line. And it could you know, spin off to an actual company if, if that's something that you really cared about. It's, it's just all these things like that that you can put in your time in and get pretty excited about. But yeah, I think these three are, are ones that I've found useful in my life, by no means a framework for you to use or you have to use, but I think they, they've definitely helped me in, in uh, where I've come from and where I am today. But yeah, those are the main points I have. Uh, thanks so much for listening.